I want to thank you for this remarkable opportunity. Um, in particular, I wanted to thank Engineering for Change and ASME. Somehow, you guys have managed to marry, you have the secret sauce, to marry indigenous wisdom, developed world engineering expertise, together to solve intractable challenges in the developing and emerging world, and that is remarkable. In addition, let me just thank Barbara and Siemens. You know, when I was at PepsiCo, we bought a lot of Siemens technology for water treatment, and I was asked to speak to Siemens' senior leadership team years ago in Berlin. And the one thing I learned about Siemens that I did not know is corporate social responsibility, social conscience, has been embedded in that company literally since it was founded over a century ago. And why do I bring that up? Because it's important to have the authenticity of the hosts and the sponsors for any challenge like this. And you don't get more authentic than E4C, ASME, and Siemens. I did want to talk a little bit, you know, the, the previous speakers did my work for me in talking about the SDGs, which is remarkable. I want to talk just a bit about the urgency of why the clean water track is so critically important. And even before the SDGs were ratified by 193 countries, there was something called UN Human Right to Water. And in fact, this year is the 10th anniversary of human right to water. And that right defines safe, sufficient, accessible, acceptable, and affordable water for all. That's a mouthful, both to say and to reach. But it's because of challenges like this and innovation like this that I see there's a light at the end of the proverbial tunnel. Let me just calibrate everyone. Today, as we sit here enjoying this remarkable event, over 200 million people mostly women and girls, spend 30 minutes round trip to collect water from an improved water source. That's not even safe. That's just an improved water source. Over 2 billion people today lack access to safely managed water supplies. Equally, over 2 billion people drink water contaminated with feces. It's remarkable, right? When you think about the unbelievable innovation that we have, the technology that is allowing us to connect all over the world, and then you hear things like that, that's a disconnect, right? And it's not only the developing and emerging world, it happens in the USA. I mean, several years ago, the, the last infrastructure report card that the US drinking water infrastructure got from the ASCE was a grade of D. And that wasn't the first time we got a grade of D. The million miles of pipe in the US for drinking water is in sorry need of upkeep at the cost of about a trillion dollars over the next 25 years. So this problem, this urgency, is not just a developing and emerging world problem. It is a global problem. And let me tell you one last statistic. When we shift to solutions, and there have been a tremendous amount of organizations that have focused on solutions, 50% of projects fail in the first five years because they lack looking at the, de the deployment ecosystem. They focus exclusively on the technology and not everything that is needed to advance the technology. Well, this, this challenge is different. You made sure that through the phases, all of those things within the deployment ecosystem were focused on supply chain, regulations, uh, community engagement, everything that is so critical to sustained success is part of this challenge. And I applaud all of the finalists. I applaud the hosts, the sponsors for that. It has been remarkable. Now, if I had a drum roll, I would love to be able to use a drum and do that because I want to announce the winner. Before I announce the winner, though, I want to share just a little bit of a distillation of what the judges' comments were across all of the phases. There was one thing that was remarkable that the winning team did. Every finalist did technology really well. Every finalist that, to some level talked about regulations, which is really important. This team in particular focused on community engagement and not only as a single snapshot. They didn't only go into the community and do a survey. They literally made the community part of the process from the beginning all the way through to the community actually co-creating and co-owning improvements to that process. And why that's important is all too often, we tend to impose what we think communities need on those communities, and we don't think of asking the communities what they want. This team did that. So it is my absolute pleasure on behalf of all of the judges of the Clean Water Track 
to announce the winner, which is Team Apuyawin, the Guardian of Water, represented by John Aguilar, Manuel Mejia, Monica Gutierrez, Alex Trujillo, and Sebastian Rodriguez. We turn it to them for their acceptance speech and let's give them a round of applause. Mm -hmm. Hi! <laughs> you cannot believe, I don't know if you can see us. There is a whole production here behind <laughs> and everything. Um, we are pretty happy. Um, I mean, we are really excited with this project for us. The engagement with the community and the active participation with them has been um, such a learning experience for us and we are really eager to mm -hmm. uh, keep on developing it and this um, it, the fact that we just won um, push us further um, in, in the development of the project. Um, I want to thank all the members of the team, Alex, Manuel, Sebastian, John. And um, no, I don't know what to say. I am ashamed <laughs> here. <laughs> yeah. So really, thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you.